Plus he showers you with blessings Never ever ever gone back down I know the devil gon' try but I'm safe now Through Christ you know I can do anything Gonna live forever and ever for eternity Welcome to Revival Time, a time for revival. The mic was all right. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I uh, just want to give praise and glory to my Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, thanks for joining us tonight. This opportunity that God has given me, I just want to share about revival. The moves of God that have happened around the world. First of all, we're going to start with some prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we give you praise we give you glory and honor for who you are and what you did on the cross for you died for our sin our sickness our pain our sorrow our oppression our depression you laid it all on the cross and it's by your stripes we are healed father we pray you help us heal us teach us love us nurture guide God shape us in the image of your son use us for your glory father for here I am Use me, Father. Who was out there, Father, feeling broken and shattered by you, Lord. That's how you work. You work through the broken and the shattered. You put them to pieces back together. We just make ourselves available to be used, Father, for you. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this day. The day you've given us today, Lord, we give you praise. And we give you thanksgiving for who you are and what you've done. What can we do but thank you? What can we do but praise you for what you've done for us? Thank you, Lord, for this day. In your precious name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Well, we'll start with a scripture, Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the mountains and the isles be glad. And they're talking about the islands. Clouds of darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies around about his lightnings light the world 
The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, that's idols, who boast of idols, who worship him and you gods. Zion hears and is glad. The daughters of Judah rejoice because of the judgments of God. For you are Lord of most high above all the earth. For you are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to remember of his holy name. Give thanks unto the Lord. The Lord inhabits the song, but he lives in your praises. As you enter your gates with thanksgiving in our heart, or we enter his courts with praise. Well, this time we're going to be talking about a great revival that broke out in California. It was the Azuzu Street Revival. Let's get my notes here. 1906 to 1915. Only 10 years you know, the revival lasted in California. The preacher's man was William Seymour. William Seymour, yes. He wasn't even allowed into the Bible. I believe he was just outside of the doors, but he heard the messages that were being preached. He learned through that. He didn't even have, uh, he couldn't see one of his eyes. He was partially blind. But God doesn't look at that. He looks at the heart. He would pray for five, they said, five hours a day. He would pray. I'm not sure how many years he was praying. And while he was praying for five five hours, can you believe it? Could you pray for five hours a day? Have you ever prayed for five hours a day? And what did God say to him? Pray longer. Pray longer. You mentioned praying. How many times have you prayed? Can you ask yourself? Five hours a day. Man, that's your heart. And what are you doing? When you're praying, what are you doing? You're pouring out your heart. You see, in prayer, you pour out your heart to the Lord. So he will hear your voice. He'll hear the call of your heart. So the man had a call and believing for revival for, for um, America. And they even asked, uh, I think it was a reporter, well, they wrote to Evan Roberts, the great revivalist from the Welsh Revival. And they asked him, what are the four things that we need to bring revival to America? That's what he said. Number one, your past must be clear. Every sin confessed to God. Every wrong unto man must be put right. Everything, number two, everything doubtful must be renounced once and for all in all our lives. Number three, obedience implicit to the Spirit of God. And number four, a public confession of Christ. When you do these four things, he believed that revival will come. And it did come in uh, Zuzu Street when these men were waiting. Actually, the, the place they were using was just an old warehouse, like an old barn. The pulpit was just broken, crates, dirt everywhere. So it's not the hell. And you know, it's the Spirit of God that comes in. It's not the house. See, you are the house of God. It's you. You are the temple of God. It's not the place where the, you're serving the Lord. It can be anywhere where the Holy Spirit can come. But they were waiting in this other in this bar, sitting down on a cafe or something like seven men. And they were thrown off their chairs. Seven men. The power of God hit that place. And seven of them were thrown off their chair, flown to the ground. With the power of the Holy Spirit, what could happen? With the power of God, the Holy Spirit can turn up. And what's it going to do? It's going to turn everything upside down. Even things that will be happening and you won't understand what's going on. But to see, that's where your faith moves in. Faith doesn't always make sense. How can it make sense when God, Jesus said, rub this mud in your eyes? Who's going to do that? Who's going to go and rub mud in your eyes? 
come and do these things, but that's where your faith is. And God says to do it. When they rubbed the mud in the eyes, what happened? The blind man could see. So it doesn't always make faith. That's why it's called faith. See, faith doesn't stand in the wisdom of man, but stands in the power of God. That's where your faith is. It's not in you, but in the power of God. And how much power? There's unlimited. God's power is unlimited. So it doesn't, it's not wisdom, but God's power. See how big your faith can be, standing in God's power. In the wisdom, no. No wisdom of man can't work it out. Can't work out the things, but only the wisdom of God that can work out where the power of God is. Hallelujah. And that's why he can use you in any situation. In this revival that happened, that was lasting for about 10 years in Azuzu Street. And they believe all these miracles that like became a street revival because the building couldn't hold the people that were coming. Literally thousands coming into the kingdom through this one revival. Must have been a massive revival because it lasted 10 years. And this is what he said. The next revival, you can imagine 100 years from now, the outpouring will be even greater. The outpouring of God will be greater than this outpouring that we are seeing. But there was a mighty move of God. Now the hundred years have come. Hundred years have come since that great revival where they saw the miracles of God happen. Healings taking place. Actually, the fire, that's what they talk about. The fire that hit that place, like that building was like rocking with the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. God was using to move through that great revival. And they believe that all the missionaries that came from that revival, 30, 40, no, maybe 50%, 60% of missionaries, even more, came from that one revival. This is what happens when revival comes. This is what happens when we see it happen. It stirs the man. It stirs your spirit. That's what God wants to do is say, stir up your gift. Whatever gift God has given you, you need to stir it up. Stir it up. Doesn't matter what people say, men say, whatever say. No. Stir up your gift. Stir up your passion inside of you to serve the kingdom of God, to serve your Lord. See, uh, what else is there in your life right now? Can you tell me what is more important at this very minute in time than serving Jesus, for living for Jesus? We're going for Jesus. What is more important in life right now? No, there's nothing. God has put the dream. God has put a purpose in your life. That's why you have these certain gifts. That's why you have them inside. Because, see, everyone has gifts and talents. But not all the same. But you need to stir whatever you have. You need to stir it up. Because that's going to help build the kingdom of God. See, we're all parts of the kingdom of like like the body of Christ, arms and legs and mouth and feet, all parts of one body. And when the one body come together, the church come together as one, and we raise that standard as men and women. They said, I will wait for the sons and daughters of God to arise. Yes, and that's will arise when we all connect together as the body of Christ. Each one using their gift, your gift is preaching or your gift is evangelism or your gift is prayer. See, you, you might have a, a real gift for prayer. God might have put it inside of you that you are a prayer warrior and you haven't exercised that gift. You haven't started using, you start using that gift and then you realize inside of you that you have that gift and then they'll see that there you are. Here's that person there. They're that real prayer warrior. We didn't know he had it until he started stirring it up. He started stirring up the gift that God had him. See, it's all at the moment settled down, but it's to raise it up. That's why I say stir it up. Stir it up. What are you going to give birth to? Will you stir it up? The ideas and the dreams that God has given you inside of you. Yes, you could be the one. You could be the one. See, William Seymour was only one. Evan Roberts was the only one. It only takes one spark. 
it can take one spark in someone's heart that the fire comes. But every one of us as born again believers has the fire inside of you. You have the fire of God because you've been baptized, you've been baptized in Jesus Christ. You're baptized unto his death. What it says in Romans 6. Like as Christ raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too shall walk in newness of life. For we are planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died more death and dominion. And that he dies, he died in the And that he liveth. He liveth unto God. You live unto God when you become a new creation. Washed in his blood. Now you made a transformation. Now you're living by his power. So you're not a new person. You're a new creation. Washed in his blood. Now you've been transformed. That's a new person. That's a new creation. You are a new creation. And God is making you. He's molding you. He's shaping you into the image of his son. To be used for the glory for this hour. For such a time as this. This is the hour and you can glorify his name. This is the hour to arise. This is the hour to stir it up. Stir up your gift, whatever it is God has given you. Maybe it's in music. Maybe it's writing songs. Maybe it's publishing books. Whatever the gift God has given you, it's all for God. See, I must decrease let the past, and he increase. So you can use the gold, but don't touch the glory. It's all about giving glory. Everything you do is to bring glory to Jesus, to bring glory to God as we decrease. I lay down my life to he be raised up. I lay it all down as like Jesus did. He laid it all down. It says, greater love have no man than lay down his life for a friend. There is no greater love than what Christ did. There is no greater love than that. Laying down your life for a friend. Are you willing to lay it down? What are these? Take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Take up your cross today and follow him where he may be leading you. Is he leading you through? Has he put that spark? Has he put that fire? You know, we're uh, reading this book, Dying for Revival, and it shows the picture and the fire is passing over the crowd. It's passing over and then it hits one heart. And that's what he's looking for, the hearts that are on fire. Holy Spirit, pass it in the bam. It hits one hungry heart. Is your heart hungry for God? Are you hungry for the things of the kingdom? Are you hungry for the lost? Are you burning for the souls? Is your heart burning for the lost people? Because that's God's heart, it's the lost. It's the lost people. You know your friends and family, if they don't know Jesus, see you're on God's side or the devil's side. There is no middle ground. You're on God's side or the devil, you can't stand in the middle. No, you are chosen, you've been called by God to reach the lost. You've been called with that fire inside of you. And this is what happens in revival. Revival hearts turn to fire. Your heart will start to burn for the lost. And this is what we want to see. This is what happened in this great revival in people's hearts. And in speaking in tongues, either through they believe. When you're speaking in tongues, you speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues was a sign of the Holy Spirit. They were speaking in tongues, and the tongues of fire. Tongues of fire when you're speaking in tongues. Yes, you have to be baptized with the fire of God. And this is what happens in these revivals happen. Moves of spirit happen if we go to this um, Isaiah 64. All right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. his name praise his name church we read the psalm the psalms of God hymns of God I can't find it and it says oh, I got the wrong one so we'll be about that. oh that you would rend the heavens that you would come down that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fire burns brushwood, a fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. You imagine you trembling at the presence of God. What else is to tremble in but to tremble? That's why worship, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And that's what happened. People do not fear God anymore. They have no fear. It says the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. When you fear Him, we must walk in reverent 
It's a reverent fear of who he is. That's the beginning of all wisdom. And they tremble. And people tremble. Mountains bow down. And the seas roar at the sound of his name. The nations tremble. When you did awesome things, which, which you did not look, you came down the mountain, shook at your presence. But since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, nor I seen any God beside you, who acts the one who waits for him, who meet, who rejoices, does righteous. Who, oh, sorry, I lost my mic. <laughs> Is it still on? <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> sorry. Who, rem- who remembers you in your way. <laughs> You are indeed angry for we have sinned in the ways we combine. We will need to be saved. Like unclean, all righteousness, like filthy rags, we fade like a leaf. Our iniquities are like the wind taking us away. Call on your name, who sits himself in hold of you, for you have hidden your face. Oh, it consumed us because of iniquity. But, O oh Lord, you are father, you are clay, you are potter. We are work of your hand. Do not furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. Indeed, please look, we are all your people, your holy cities of wilderness. Zion is wilderness, Jerusalem desolation, a holy and beautiful temple. We are the fathers. Where are your fathers? Praise and burned up with fire, and the pleasant things are waste. Will you restrain yourself because of these things? You will hold your peace and afflict us severely. No, but this part of 64, oh, we pray that you would rent the heavens. That means we need to open up the heavens. We pray for an open heaven. See where the revival happens in an area. That's an open heaven. That's a portal to heaven. That's the, the opening that has been. That's why that opening happened in Azusa Street and in Wales and when there's other revivals in different areas. That's where the heavens were opened. And God portal, that's what we call a portal. A portal to heaven. Yes. What a mighty revival of that man, William Seymour, the great revivalist, I'm not sure of his age. But he was a great man of God, like a father of faith. See these revivals that have happened that I was sure about. Oh, where is it? Perth, if we go to 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 8. I hope I don't drop my mic again. Corinthians 14. For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for the battle? See, God has called us as trumpet blowers. And if we don't blow the trumpet, if it doesn't make a certain sound, who the church will be ready? Who is ready now? The church is ready. What's going on now? The spiritual battles that are happening around our nation. So if we don't blow that trumpet, it says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound it on the mountain. Blow the trumpet for the day of the Lord is coming. You must blow your trumpet to warn the churches. Must be ready. Must be ready for the coming of the Lord. That's why we're praying and we're sharing right now for revival. That someone will awaken. Some of these churches or someone will awaken and a spark will happen inside of you. It will spark something inside of you and you'll start sensing something inside of you that God is calling you. God has put a calling on your life. See, everyone is called. It's Jesus calls. Jesus is calling right now. He's calling out to you. He's calling out to us. Who will go for me? Who will go? Who will run for me? Who will pray? Who, who has that burden on their heart? Who has a burden for their family? Who is having a burden for their community? Who's having a burden for the nation? If you love your nation, you love your family, you love your community, are you getting a burden for the lost? Are you getting a burn inside of you? See, the name of Jesus must burn inside of you. That's why it's talked about the fire. Because it's like a burning sensation inside of you will come. And will come with a passion, a passion to serve Him, a passion for the lost, a passion.
passion to see God move. Is that what you're calling? Is that the burden of your heart? Or what is the burden of your heart? What is coming in? I know in this time around there's all these things coming in our life. Distractions are coming in every direction. I know this place every day you wake up. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities in higher places. That's the battle that you're facing. That's why every morning you have to lay down your life. That's the battle of a Christian. Dying to yourself. That is why Jesus said, lay down your life and take up your cross. So right now, this is the time that he's calling. This is the time you get a burden for the lost. Get a burden for New Zealand. Get a burden for the lost. So if your heart is burning for the lost now, are you going to pray? Are you going to pray without ceasing? See, if we aren't praying, it says that we are called to pray, but God is calling the prayer warriors. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your energy? What are you doing in your spirit? All this time. That, see, we only have this. We heard about this evangelist. And I'll just share this. This great evangelist. One minute he's preaching. The next day he's, he's in the face of Jesus. He's in heaven. He's meeting Jesus. One day, you never know your time. See, God has given you for a certain time on earth. And what are you going to say? What is the legacy you're going to leave with your life? What is the legacy you're going to show with your life? What did you do with your life? No, God, that's the beauty of that's the beauty of serving the Lord. He has given you a purpose. You have a purpose. God made you. He made all of us for a purpose. Our time in life, the two things, to know God and to know your purpose. So you give your heart to Jesus. And when you give your heart to Jesus... As you're studying, you're reading the Word, the Holy Spirit is coming. It's finding your purpose. It's being revealed as you step out in faith, as you step out with your gifts and your purpose and the burn starts coming in your heart as He's shaping you. He's the potter. You are the clay. He's molding you. He's shaping you. And the more He shapes you into the image of His Son, the more He can shape you into the image of Jesus. Imagine you're more like Jesus and less like yourself. That's what it says you are a new creation. So God wants to shape you into more like him. The more you are shaped into Jesus, the more God can use you. The more you're being used. Because what are you doing? You're laying down your life. It's not ability. It's making yourself available. See, when doors open, you've got to make yourself available. Say, yes, I will go. I'll go be a fool. I don't care what the world may say. I don't care what they're going to say about me. I want to serve my Lord. I want to serve my God. I want to go out and do it even if I mess up, make mistakes because I am not perfect. None of us are perfect. Only Christ is perfect. For there is no one righteous, not even one. He is the only righteous one. So we step out in faith. We stir it up and we do what God has called you to do. We step out. Yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. Use me. It's not ability. It's your availability to be used. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you give me. It says every good gift comes down from the hand of the Father. Every good gift that you have in your life right now, God is blessed. We are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Everything that you have today has been given by God. Every good gift comes down from His hand. You think about your life. Every good gift that God has given you, so many gifts, so many gifts. This is what they say, so stir it up. Some special gift of hate you might have. You might have a gift of healing. You might have all these gifts. You don't know. You haven't stepped out in faith. You need to step out in faith and just go. It's even not the man. It's the Holy Spirit working through you. You are the vessel. That's all we are is the vessel to carry through Holy Spirit power to be used for the glory of God. This is what happens. This is what happens when revival comes. It stirs people's heart up and they don't worry about anything else in their life. They're not worried about anything. What are you worry about? So worry about nothing but by prayer and supplication. Give your request to him. So he will use you for the kingdom. This is the hour. right now. Everything that's happening right now. No, he's stirring. He wants to stir you up. He wants to stir you up. Maybe you're going to be that trumpet. Maybe you're going to be the trumpet that blows and awakens the churches. You might be that trumpet that blows out and awakens another church in your street. Wakens a church in another community. And how God is going to use you. 
You don't know until you step out. You got to step out of it. You have to step out on the water. Get out of the boat. Get out of your boat. Don't stay in your boat. No, you've got to get on the water. You've got to step out. We can't stay. Do not be conformed to the ways, but be transformed by the renewing. You don't be conformed to this world. No, it's the renewing of your mind on the Word of God. Renewing your mind on God's Word all the time. Renewing your mind and then seeing the vision. See, God has given you a vision or a dream. He give you that dream, you've got to step out. See, it's a vision. A vision that God has given you to be used for the kingdom. That's the vision He's giving you right now. Is he's calling? Is he pulling at your heart? Is he pulling at your heart now? Yes. I will go. I will pray longer. I will worship longer. I will serve longer. I will give all to Jesus. That's the thing in your life. And it's trying to surrender it all. Surrendering it all for Jesus. Like my old pastor said, it's a life of abandonment. Abandoning everything. It's an abandonment of everything. Leaving it all because it's the way you say yes. I'm sold out. I'm sold out to Jesus. I'm sold out. There's only one focus. One focus. See if you have that one focus. All these things coming, trying to take you off course. Take you away from your calling. It's trying to pull you in another direction. I know. I've heard same thing has happened to you. Things are pulling at your heart all the time. I know. I know what it's like. But you've got to keep that one focus, the cross. That one focus. How Jesus died on the cross. Never forget that, that he died for you. That was his love for you. That he died on the cross for your sin. What can you do with heaven when you see that God will send his best from heaven so you will give your best back to him? He sent his son to die for you. Well, and you're going to say, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You know, see, it's what you know. You know that Jesus died for you and he died for your sin. Your sickness, your pain, oppression, whatever you're going through in your life. Jesus died for that. Now, what are you going to do with your life? How are you going to live your life? Are you going to give it all over to Jesus? Are you going to give your life to Jesus? Are you going to have a burden for the lost? It's pulling at your heart now. And this is what happens in the Bible. As we're praying, New Zealand, see, he's the same. God is the same yesterday, today. And he doesn't change. We are the ones that change. And as we're changing, we get a burden. Why did I get a burden for revival? Reading about revivals and fire. I'd open up my Bible. Every time it would happen, fire, fire. I'd open up another page. The only thing that hit my fire, fire. Every time I opened my Bible, I've been to this revival. Fire, what was happening? It was quickening to my spirit. Then revival the fire always happens, the fire of God, the fire of revival, the anointing, baptized by fire. And when that fire is released, a passion, baptized with the fire of the Holy Ghost, oh, more power. The power of God will hit you. The power of God, and you know what it say? how can you be silent? That's what happens when you see evangelists out on the street. That's what happens when you see people outreaching and doing things. What's happened there? Their spirit has awakened and the fire has hit them. They cannot be silent. You cannot be quiet anymore. You won't be silent anymore with people where you go. How can you be silent when this thing has happened to you? You can't. This one says, go tell it on the mountains. How will they know? Go tell it everywhere that Jesus is Lord. Go tell it everywhere that he is Lord. How will they know if they never hear that? No, they need to hear it. Because out there right now, they're hearing other voices. Other voices are coming in from all directions. Voices of deception and delusion. There are these things coming against them. No, they need to hear the voice. The voice of God. So will you be that trumpet blower? Will you blow the trumpet? So it says, let's go again. For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for the battle? See, if the trip doesn't make that certain sound, how are we preparing? We're not preparing for the spiritual battle. People are not hearing that certain sound that needs to be made in the land. Certain sound as the trumpet is blown. It's sounded on the mountain, the trumpet of the Lord. The Lord is coming. You've got to make that sound. Make a sound. When you're blowing the trumpet of Zion, this is the calling. Maybe God is calling you. you know what God is going to do with your life. Use for the kingdom. Use for revival. See, we're revival in this nation of New Zealand. Sensing that a move of God, that the wind 
and the breath of God. See, we've had, right lately we've had some really heavy rain, heavy rain in New Zealand. Wow, the heavy rain this is the latter day rain. Here, the rain is very spiritual. It is a spiritual thing. This is what it talks about the latter day rain. The latter rain is an outpouring. The latter rain that is coming on the land. I pray we will come. I always pray in New Zealand from the top to the bottom that the Holy Spirit will come in our nation and touch it from the top to the bottom. The wind would blow through our land. A wind and the breath of God will blow through our nation. The great nation of New Zealand, a nation needing revival right now. Right now we need it. So if you feel the call on your heart, maybe you're going to be that spark. Maybe you're going to be the one that blows the trumpet to warn the churches to get ready now. Get ready now because the time is coming. We don't know when the Lord is coming, but time, you can see everything that's happening now. No, the church needs to awaken. The church needs to awaken now. Yes, it's a revival. And it's a revival that happened in Azusa Street. He predicted a hundred years later. It's been that hundred years. It's been over the hundred years now, 105 years. Now, it's going to be coming to New Zealand, coming to the nations. He's believing, believing, believing for God to move, that a wave is coming. A great wave of the Spirit is coming in our nation. A great spiritual awakening is being prophesied over New Zealand. A great awakening is coming. We pray that God will move, that God will use you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting a call. Hallelujah. Torture estimations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we are the army. See, we are the army of God. And see, the church is the base, but you are the army. God is training you up in the base, in the church, as a soldier for him. We are the army of God. And it says the army of God will arise. But we have the spiritual weapons. Because it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. Every battle that's happening, it's happening in the spiritual realm. And it says he's given you authority over all the enemy's power. All the enemy's power. Give me the, oh, nothing will enemy do you harm. Luke 10, 19, if you speak that scripture. I have given you authority over all the enemy's power. Nothing will anyway do you harm. Luke 10, 19. See, that's what even the pastor was sharing on Sunday. That the victory, you have the victory in Jesus. You have the victory in your mouth. Speak it out. Speak out your victory. Speak out your victory in Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. The victory that Christ gave you, hallelujah. But it's through meditating on the word of God that you get that victory and you know the scriptures. See, when the enemy came to what he say, for it is written, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, every word that proceedeth from every word that proceedeth out of his mouth. You're not living by the bread, you're living by the bread of God, the bread of the word of God. Every word that proceedeth out of your mouth, not bread alone, but the word of God. As Jesus is the bread of life. Yes, as you're meditating on the word, you're speaking it out. You're speaking it out. That's what happens. We want revival. Revival comes. This is a time that God wants to see revival in our nation. Yes, so many great revivals. I'm going to be sharing about Smith Wigglesworth. I don't have time today. Smith Wigglesworth, that great revivalist, came to New Zealand. I'll leave that till next week. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, right now we pray. I just want to pray right now. Holy Spirit, come, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, come. Touch our life, Father. Touch the lives that are listening right now, Lord. Touch them with your power, Father, for I am just a vessel to be used. Lord, there's people listening or watching that have never given their life to Jesus. Right now, that's your heart is the lost, the souls. The souls, souls that don't know you, Lord, we pray that they will come.
I pray that they will give their life to you today, Lord. The thing they're going through in their life, they must realize that it's a spiritual battle, a spiritual battle that's going on, Lord. No, I pray they lay down their life, they give their life to you, and they become born again. And one here that has never given their life to Jesus, I pray that they will give their life to you tonight, Lord Jesus. Give their life to you and to be served for your kingdom because you're calling out. You're calling out for the lost. You're calling out for the souls. Souls in our nation. Souls to come into the kingdom of God, Lord. Souls. That's your heart. Your heart is the lost people. Not the people that are saved, but the lost people, Lord. So many in this nation. We pray, Lord, a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening will happen in our nation. It's the fire of the Holy Spirit. Baptized in your name, Father. Baptized with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, Lord. Let it be, because faith is now. Faith is now. Our faith is now, right now. You've given us this faith, right now, Lord. It's only through you we are just a vessel to be used for your glory. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise your mighty name, Jesus. I'll give him praise. See, I went to this revival meeting. Oh, I told you before. It was the Toronto blessing. And I got baptized so much that when I went to work, I was so drunk, they sent me home from work. And it would just continually happen all the time. All the time. See, one revival. And then I open up my Bible, and every time the word fire would jump out at me. Fire, fire. I read it again. Fire, fire, go. And then go. Take that fire and go. That's why the Holy Spirit hits you. It hits you because you're going to promote. The Holy Spirit has come to this is way to, to be a witness for Jesus. To be a witness for him. That's how they waited. They said they waited for the Holy Spirit. And you're waiting for the Holy Spirit. Then you will be his witnesses. Then you will go out. You have no fear for the fear of God. It's the beginning of all wisdom. You won't have it anymore. You'll just go out on the streets. You won't want to hide. All the chains will be broken out. And you'll just go for God. You'll just go for the Lord when the Holy Spirit hits you. Because the Holy Spirit is moving through you to be used for the glory. He's moving through your body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray that this great revival, like this revival that happened in Toronto, that's what it says, the sound man, like the sound man here on that. <laughs> they got so drunk. They got so drunk, just like in the Pentecost. And all they did, well, he said the secretary in their church, all she did was for three days speak in tongues. She couldn't speak any other, only speaking in tongues. All the time you talk to her, she just spoke in tongues. Imagine that. You're trying to talk to someone and they go, Imagine that for three days. Speaking in tongues for three days. <laughs> And the sound man got so drunk like Pentecost. That's what happens. So drunk, but it's a drunk with joy. Drunk with joy, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're drunk, and it's, oh, man, if you, when it hits you, you'll know what it's like. Rolling around on the ground all the time, but no. This is what happens in the Bible. Miracles happen. Signs and wonders and miracles start to happen. Start to happen all around you because they signs and wonders will follow those who believe. Do you believe when you hear of these miracles? Like you hear of this, this meeting, how this youth started flying. I never heard anything before. Then I heard in this meeting, he started flying in the room and flying out the room. You imagine it now. Start flying in a room, <laughs> flying outside the school and flying in again. We haven't heard much about it, but that's what I heard. At this meeting, that's what happened. God is the same. Maybe it's going to happen in your next meeting. Maybe it's going to happen in your next youth meeting. If you're a youth, <laughs> you imagine that. Start blind. You never know what God is going to do. He make the blind see. He make the lame walk. You know, we're going to be talking about Smith Wiggles. We're Smith Wiggles. We've raised the dead. Ray, go to the funeral. Lift them up. I was going to preach about him next week, but I'll just start. He'd go to the meetings where they're having the, the funeral. He'd lift up the body. Start shaking it out. Spirit of death, get out. Shake it out. They start coughing and coming alive. And he lay down the body and he'd walk out. A man of faith, Smith Wigglesworth. What a great man.
Japan, they believed that he came to New Zealand. And the, the, the birth, one of the birth of the Pentecostal church. Great moves of the Spirit of God. He got called to come to New Zealand. I really want to share more about what he's done in our nation, the meetings he had in his nation. But he, he was at a um, Salvation Army meeting. And he got saved at that meeting. The guy, um, Booth. Yeah, one of his meetings. And then he'd go to speak. And when he was at church, always his wife would speak in the church. He would never get up and speak. And then one of them, he got up and he spoke at the meeting. And his wife said, that's not my Smith. How did that happen? Well, he was baptized, the Holy Spirit. And then he went out everywhere, preaching and healing and raising the dead. Maybe you have that gift. Maybe you have that gift like that other man, David Hogan, who raises the dead. Who they try to kill him and he rose again. They try to kill him and he came back alive. Maybe you have the gift of raising the dead. Healing the sick. You know, they believed in the last days that, I heard this prophet say that all the hospitals, so like men of God or even the youth, will just walk through the hospitals. And as they walk through the wards of the hospitals, people will start coming out of their beds, start rising out of their beds, healed. As the youth walk and pray, as they walk through the wards of the hospital. Imagine that. Imagine that in the last days, the great healings taking place. As the youth that have touched with the power of the Holy Spirit start visiting hospitals. And as they walk through the wards of the hospital, people start feeling healed. And start coming out of their bed and start walking and start being healed through the hospital. And it's just someone that's been touched with the power of the Holy Spirit. And as they're walking through, see, God is not a simple people. The youth can do it, the young, it's not of age. doesn't count on the age. doesn't matter the age of the person. And if they're used by God, being touched by the Holy Spirit, God has given you the gift of healing. And as you walk through the wards, you'll see it. Are you believing that? That as you walk through what you will see people healed straight in the hospital. See, they used to, at the side of the revival, I heard they were bringing the ambulances. They were bringing the pets to the revival. And people were being healed straight out of the ambulance as they bring the, the patients out. They're healed as they brought them straight to the revival, the Lakeland revival. They're being healed straight away. Healed like that. Imagine that happening in the future. Imagine that in your youth, in your youth group. You start visiting as you're a young man. Or in your youth group, you start visiting the hospitals. And as you walk through the hospital, the power of the Holy Spirit, you have the gift of healing. And people just start being healed in every bed. The whole ward starts rising up. People in the ward start walking out. Think, what's happening here? The Holy Spirit is moving through. The Holy Spirit is moving through that whole hospital. It's moving through the wind of God. The healing and power of God is moving through. For oh, great is he that lives in me. He that lives in the... Oh, sorry, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. I keep dropping the mic. Sorry, I get excited because it's the miracles. There's no limit to what God, there is no limit to what God can do. The miracles. God is the God of miracles. He is the God of miracles. That's who He is. That's who our Lord is. He heals the sick, and you hear He's the blind. He raises the dead, but all He needs is the vessel to use. All he needs to say, yes, Lord, I'll be the one. If God has given you that certain gift of healing, that certain gift to be used for healing, and you use it for the kingdom, use it for his glory, and you see the miracles of God, this is what happened. In the last days, what does it say? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour it out upon all flesh. Let's have a look in the book of Joel. Joel, yes, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He's going to pour it out. He's going to pour out a spirit upon all flesh. In the last days, I will pour. It doesn't say I might, I should, or I could. No, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He's about to pour it out. Pour it out on this generation. This will be the generation. This will be the generation that rises generation to rise for Jesus 
to rise to be used for the kingdom of God. Let all things fall away. Let everything else fall away in your life. And just run. Run for Christ. This is, great. This is the greatest race. This is the great run, the race. The race of faith in your life. It's when you start hearing about the miracles. That's what faith says. Faith and stand with sins in the power of God. But faith comes by hearing. So the thing is when people, they don't hear the miracles, they, the more you hear of the miracles, the more it's building your faith. The more you hear the word of God, the more it's building your faith. And God is doing miracles everywhere. You're not hearing about it. Miracles are happening right now. Right now I believe there's a miracle happening. You see, you are his miracle waiting to happen in our nation. You are a miracle waiting to happen. And he used you for his glory. Yes. Heal the sick, make the blind see, make the lame walk. And even if you have been called the special calling, like some of the meetings you hear, people raising, I know that with David Hogan, that they bring cloths, they lay a cloth, they ask to pray over this cloth, then they take the cloth that he's prayed over, and they take it to the morgue and they lay it over one of the um, people in your family. They lay that cloth and pray over it, and that people, person come alive. But you have that healing power as if that God has given you. You don't know. You don't know the gifting you have until you step out. And this is what happens with the revival. This is the time now to shake everything. God is trying to shake you up. He needs to shake us to see what's going on, to shake us away out of the mentality of the world. The world system, you see it around you crumbling. It's crumbling that don't know the Lord. It's crumbling around you. No, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added as we seek after his kingdom. So we need to seek after him. Be used for the kingdom of God. He said he's built his church, the gates of hell. He will build his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what the Lord is saying. He will build it. He will build it up as he builds you up. That's why we pray. Hallelujah. He's going to build your church. He's going to build you up to be used. Used you for the glory, for the kingdom, for kingdom duty that he's calling you for. Hallelujah. Maybe you're a worshiper. Maybe you're a prayer warrior. We don't know until you step out. Maybe you have gifts of healing. You have gifts of um, word of knowledge. Maybe you get a word of knowledge. When you get a word of knowledge from the Lord, you've got to speak it out. In your church, you come to churches you go to and they're, they're quiet. No, you got to, if God gives you a word, just speak it out. You know it's the real word until you step out and speak it. Speak that word of knowledge that God has given you. The translation of tongues, if he's given you that gift. See, there's so many other gifts of the Spirit that you're not using. They're not utilizing in the church. We've got to utilize all the church, all the gifting in the church. So the whole members come together as one. And as we are one, it says, a sleeping giant. It will rise in our nation. It's the, the hope of the nation. It's the, the hope of our land is a church in New Zealand. It's a people on fire for Jesus. It's revival in the land. You can imagine a great revival happening in New Zealand. As people get on fire and they're nothing else. They're pursuing after God. They're pursuing up to the things of the Lord, out to the lost, out for souls, out to build the church, out to use their gift into service. Your service for the kingdom. Seek Him first with your life. And everything else will be added unto you as you seek after the things of the kingdom. So you can have an eye for eternity. That's your home. See, this earth is not our home. Even our body, this is what I was at. And He said, this teacher said, this is what you wear in your body. This is only your earth suit. This is your earth suit. It's not your real suit. No. You're, and this is not your real home. Your home is in heaven with the Lord. That's where our home is. We are just passing through this place. Passing through as travelers on a journey. Trying to take as many souls as we can back to heaven with us. That's why he's calling. He says, he who wins souls is wise. Be wise to win the lost. Be wise to reach out. So I'm praying now. Right now, something will stir inside of you. Something will burn inside of you for the things of the kingdom. Yes. And all things else, your worries and fears and all will fall away. Yes. It will fall away from you. Let it fall to the ground and seek after God. Worship Him. 
Worship him with all your life. Worship him with all your might and your soul and your passion for Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. That's what your life is about. God has made you for that purpose. That's why we're here now. That's why we're here for this hour. He's made you for a purpose for such a time as this. So I just want to give an outreach right now to you. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you're watching today and you're never, this is my heart, that it would reach you, that you will give your life to Jesus tonight. This will be your greatest night, that you give your life to Jesus Christ. Right now we're praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for anyone out there right now that never given their life to Jesus, that they would ask them into your heart. Father, I pray that you forgive all their sin, the mistakes they made in their life. It's asked right now. They open their heart to you, and you ask Jesus into your life. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive me, Lord. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I close my heart with you in there. Now I will go and tell someone about it, that I've given my life to Christ, and I want to serve him and worship him. Thank you. If you prayed that prayer today, pray this has been your greatest day that you became the first day you were born and then you were born again hallelujah praise the name of jesus so thank you for being with me tonight revival time and it is a time for revival so i believe by, by next week we can meet again in the precious name of our savior jesus christ thank you amen thank you brother amen Oh